Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Miri and today I received a request from Kate who requested a video on assessments to help her prepare for the MBCOT exam that she'll be taking in 29 days. And now this is a near impossible request because there are so many assessments as she mentioned on her comment and there's really no easy way to learn this. Uh, there is just, just, just the sheer volume of content that you need to know will take some work and learning and memorization. But I do have some tips to uh, help retain some of the information. So I'm going to share them today and to help make this less overwhelming, I'm going to do different segments. So today I'm going to cover just the pediatric developmental assessments and then sometime this week I will cover the motor assessments and the sensory, social participation and the list goes on and on and on. Um, now I know that uh, Many of you are concerned about what assessments to focus on and the extent to how much you need to know for each assessment. And I'm not allowed to talk about the content of the NBCOT exam or the questions, but I will say this. The NBCOT exam is trying to assess your readiness to be an entry level clinician or pr practitioner. So what does that mean? Will you have to regurgitate facts and do matching of the definition to the assessment? No, you'll probably need to have a general understanding of the purpose of the assessment. You'll need to know the population and the age range for who it's for, as well as the problem area that it's trying to analyze, the assessment is trying to analyze. So those are important things to keep in mind when you are learning the assessments. The purpose of the assessment, the population, the age of the population, as well as the problem area, okay? All right, uh, as I do with many of my other videos, I'm going to group some of these assessments together based on their similarities and or differences in order to help you identify the subtle differences uh, so that you don't get them confused because many of them look alike and sound alike. And for the development assessments that I'm gonna go over today, all of the focus areas are pretty much going to sound the same. It's going to be some sort of gross motor, fine motor, social participation, um, communication, language. Uh, so it's going to be hard to find the difference, but you will have to narrow down your answer choices with developmental assessments based on the purpose of the assessment and the age group. Okay, and another thing that I want to mention real quick is that uh, in eliminating your answer choices, it's also helpful to think about what the goal of the assessment is. So if you are, for example, trying to determine eligibility for special education services, you probably want to use a norm reference standardized test versus if you are trying to assess uh, the functional level of a child, functional performance, uh, you will probably want to do a criterion reference uh, assessment that involves skilled observation or parent caregiver interviews or questionnaires. So those are other things to think about. And in terms of memorizing the age range, I didn't know the specific numbers, to be honest, for all the assessments, but I used the name of the assessment as helpful hints and clues. So for example, the Bailey Scales of Infant Development. Now, if I see that as an option choice on a question that has a child who's eight years old, I would automatically eliminate it because infant, I'm thinking probably between zero to two, three years old toddler age, right? So look at the name of the assessment to help you uh, figure out some clues if you forget the content during the exam. All right. <clears throat> the first group is the Denver Developmental Screening Tool and the Bailey Scales of Infant Development. The similarities for these two assessments are as follows. They both begin at one month in terms of administration. They are both standardized assessments and they both may involve parent or caregiver interviews and questionnaires. Okay, so let's go back to the Denver Developmental Screening Tool. This is for one month to six years. And when I think of Denver Developmental Screening Tool, I think of the word 
uh, or the city Denver, Colorado. Denver was named the baby boomer capital of America at one point. And so maybe with all these babies coming out and running around, they needed to have a screening tool for early identification of delays for at-risk children. The key words to remember here is that the screening is for at-risk children and that it is to have an early identification of delays. Now there are four areas that are assessed in the evaluation and that is personal, social, fine motor slash adaptive, language, and gross motor skills. This is again a standardized task performance and observation and each test item indicates the chronological age at which the child needs to perform that item. And the therapist will interpret the child's performance as normal, abnormal, uh, questionable, or unstable. All right? So let's now talk about the Bailey Scales of Infant Development. This is from one month to 42 months, which is also equivalent to three and a half years. The trick that I use to memorize the Bailey Scales is I associate the word Bailey with a baseline. So the purpose of the assessment is uh, to gain a baseline for intervention planning based on the developmental functioning as well as performance areas. So the five areas that are assessed here are cognitive, language, motor, social slash emotional and adaptive behavior. Now this is a pretty comprehensive assessment and it can even uh, help you obtain detailed information from a nonverbal child, so something to remember. Now we're going to talk about the assessments, developmental assessments that are used for preschoolers. The first one is first step screening test for preschoolers and the second one I'm going to talk about uh, is the Miller assessment for preschoolers. The similarities are as follows. Uh, these two are both, again, standardized. They both began at two years and nine months uh, for administration, and they are both for preschoolers, as you can see on the name of the assessment. Going back to first step, how do you remember this one? The key is in the word first step. What is the first step before you do a comprehensive evaluation? Screening. And that's what this assessment is. This assessment screens to see if additional comprehensive evaluation would be necessary for at-risk children. And it is usually used in conjunction with other preschool assessments like the Miller assessment for preschoolers. There are five areas that uh, this assesses, which is cognition, communication, physical, social and emotional, as well as adaptive functioning. Uh, this is a standardized screening, as I mentioned, with tabletop activities, and there will usually be space required for gross motor activities as well. Now, Miller Assessment for Preschoolers, uh, also known as MAP. This is two years and nine months to five years and eight months. Uh, to help you remember this one, it's good to talk about who Lucy Jane Miller was. She's the one that came up with this assessment and published it in 1982. She was frustrated with a lack of adequate screening tools for uh, preschool, early childhood children and wanted to map out a plan. Miller assessment for preschoolers map, map out a plan to predict school related problems to assess sensory, motor, and cognitive abilities. And so this is a standardized task performance screening that helps you to evaluate preschoolers for mild to moderate developmental delays. And the results are compared with uh, norms. Okay, so that's the uh, Miller assessment for preschoolers and the first step screening and they're usually used together uh, because again first step is just a screening to find out if additional comprehensive evaluation is necessary. This one is only about 15 minutes and then the more comprehensive evaluation would be Miller assessment for preschoolers which uh, would take about 30 to 40 minutes to administer. I'm getting tired, <laughs> but stick with me. I am going to push through, so let's push through together. There are two more assessments left. Um, 
The next one will be the Hawaii Early Learning Profile, also seen as HELP. Um, not seen as, but it's also written out as HELP. And the age range is 0 to 3 or 3 to 6, depending on uh, whether or not the children is at risk or has developmental delay. So for 0 to 3, it's for children with risks or developmental delay. And for children, it's 3 to 6, uh, that category is for children with or without developmental delay. Now, when you think of Hawaii Early Learning Profile, I want you to use Hawaii as the keyword to remember this one. So think about Hawaii. Uh, what comes to mind? For me, nature, natural, uh, family vacation, uh, freestyle, free flow, you're just kind of going with the flow. Uh, so let's use that context and those words to break down the purpose of the assessment. Uh, nature, okay? This assessment takes place and is administered in child's natural environment. Uh, family vacation, right? So family center, it takes place in the context of the family's home. It's a very family centered uh, assessment uh, and it takes place during their typical or regular routine. Uh, what was the last thing I said? Going with the flow, freestyle, right? Hawaii. Um, that translates to standardized. It's not standardized. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Not standardized. It's flexible. It focuses on play-based intervention and activities to encourage participation. Now it assesses six areas: cognition, language gross motor, fine motor, social emotional, as well as self-help. And like I said, this is a non-standardized assessment and it's educational curriculum reference test and developmental age can be approximated through this assessment. That was a lot, but just remember that this is a family-centered uh, assessment that is administered in the child's natural environment, typically during family routine, typical routine, and it uh, monitors growth and development and identifies needs. Okay, last one, pediatric evaluation of disability inventory. It's also written out as PETI, six months to seven and a half years. Okay, the trick to remember this word or this assessment is in the word of the assessment, disability. Uh, this assessment dis detects functional deficits and assesses capabilities to determine the developmental level. It assesses three areas, self-care, mobility, and social skills. This is a standardized behavior checklist and rating scale that analyzes the functional capabilities and it also determines the level of assistance as well as modification. All right. Of the six assessments that I covered today, there was only one that was non-standardized. And if you remember, that was the Hawaii Early Learning Profile. Everything else today that was covered was standardized assessment. Um, so that's it for today. I'm going to cover the pediatric motor and maybe the sensory development tomorrow, depending on how big the content is, the volume of the content. And um, that's it. All right, Kate, I hope this is helpful. I know you're taking your exam in 29 days. And so I'm going to try to push out these videos as quickly as I can. Uh, no promises, but um, I'm rooting for your success. I'm invested in your OT license success, so I will try my best. All right, so I will see you tomorrow. Bye.